Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to The Tune Project. Today I'll be teaching you how to play a blues scale on the violin. And before we get into all that, if you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up so it circles around the YouTube algorithm and gets around to people who need to learn the blues scale. And if you're not already subscribed to The Tune Project, I ask you to consider hitting that red subscribe button below so you can see all of the videos that I make in the future and hit the bell so that you can be notified when each of those videos does come out. So today we'll be learning an A blues scale. Now, if you're familiar at all with major scales and specifically the A major scale, you would know that the step pattern that we have, the intervals that we have are whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And that's just kind of standard across the board for all major scales. Now with blues scales, it's a little bit different. And if you're familiar with the A major scale, you would know that we have three sharps in the key signature, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. So the notes that correspond with those scale degrees are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and then back to A. So in a blues scale, that's a little bit different. Although we do start and end on the first scale degree, everything else in between is a little bit different. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And by the end of this video, you'll know just how to play an A blues scale. So like I mentioned with the A major scale, we have all of our scale degrees lined up nicely in order. And in the blues scale, they're a little bit more mixed up. So whereas in the A major scale, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the blues scale, we have one, flat three, four, flat five, five, and flat seven, which translates note-wise to A, C natural, D, E flat, E natural, G, and then back to A. So it's a little bit different, but once you get the hang of it and once you hear how it sounds, it's really not that difficult. So if you are a theory nerd and you like learning all about the intervals and the spacing and everything like that, then that's something you'll want to memorize is the names of each of those scale degrees and the notes associated with them. However, if you're just interested in learning how to play the scale and be able to use it within your music or improvising or whatever you wanna use it for, then stay tuned because we're gonna learn how to play it and the finger pattern that you can use to kind of help you with learning it. So since we are comparing the A major scale to the A blues scale, I'm gonna start by just playing the A major scale just one octave so that you can hear how it sounds in comparison with the blues scale. So here we go, A major scale, one octave starting on A. If you know it, you can play along with me. So there's our A major scale. And now that you know the names of the notes for the blues scale, as well as their scale degrees, see if you can kind of pick up on them as we go through, as I play this blues scale for you. See if you can identify what falls where based on what we've already learned so far in this video. And if based on that, you think you're ready to play it, then go ahead and join me for this. If not, we'll talk about it more after I'm done playing it. So here is the A blues scale. <laughs> you probably noticed that the finger pattern is a little bit mixed up or skipping some notes and in fact we don't use our first finger at all in this blue scale whereas normally in the A major scale we would have both a B and an F sharp using our first finger for both in the A blue scale we don't have that at all so that's just one of a few things that might 
seem a little bit tricky, but once you start playing this more and start to get the hang of it, I think you'll find that it's actually easier than you may think and you'll become familiar with it in no time. So another thing to think about too is we have our flat five or the E flat. So if you're not used to using your fourth finger or playing flat notes, this might be a good time to go ahead and practice that. And if you wanted to, you could just set your third finger on D and then play that D to start with. And then just place your fourth finger, that E flat, right up against your third finger so that you get the spacing right. Now it's important that you have your D in tune before we can set that fourth finger. So then once we get that third finger D in tune, we would then place our fourth finger just a half step above your third finger. So in my case, it actually is touching my third finger, depending on your fingers and your violin size and all of that, this might vary slightly. But in general, those two fingers are gonna be very, very close. So we would play that third finger and then fourth finger for the E flat before moving on to our open string E. And then we have those, those couple of tricky spots worked out. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go through and play the A blues scale once again. And now that we've talked it over a little bit, and hopefully you have a little bit of a better understanding of how it all works and how to play the blues scale, I wanna see if you can join me this time in playing the blues scale if you didn't the first time around. So here we go, starting on A, and we're gonna do one, two, three, four. to get most of it that time if not all of it and if you were congratulations that's so awesome this is not the most easy scale but hopefully at this point you have found that it's probably a lot easier than you initially thought it was so now that you know the blues scale the a blues scale you can go ahead and now start to add some rhythm to it maybe incorporate it into some other songs that you're working on or anything that you're working on that's blues or jazz this is a great scale to be able to infuse in there and you can even practice improvising with this blues scale this is a great one for improvisation so just to give you a little bit of an example i'm going to show you how you can incorporate rhythm into this a blues scale so here we go starting from the beginning i'm going to add just a little bit of a rhythm to it and then if you want to pause this video when I'm done and try it for yourself, then you're welcome to do so. So you noticed I added a little bit of a swung rhythm as well as a couple of slides in there too just to make it more stylistic and interesting. So you're welcome to do that and a great way to practice improvising on top of adding rhythms is to mix up the order of the notes. So just like we would if we were using a major scale, playing a tune or improvising in a major key, we would just take our knowledge of that scale and mix up all of those notes add different rhythms, add the different note orders and all that sort of thing. We're gonna do that same thing here with this blues scale. So to give you a little bit of an example, I'm gonna start on the one and then we're gonna change it up and we're gonna move around to different notes within the scale. And I'm gonna still use that rhythm that I just showed you just a little bit earlier. So that's just a very brief 
short example of a way that you can practice mixing up those notes and improvising, but of course you can add your own rhythms, you can change the rhythms and all of that sort of thing, but first make sure that you're really solid on the notes all in order of the blue scale, and then once you feel good about that, that, then you can go back and you can practice improvising and mixing up everything that we have going on so far. So I hope that you enjoyed learning the A blues scale today. Hopefully you can now play it for your friends, play it for your family, practice improvising, and kind of put your own spin on the scale, and I will see you in my next video. Happy practicing. And if you're interested in learning how to further your support of The Tune Project, you can visit patreon.com slash the tune project for all of that information. And also, if you like shopping on Amazon and get any of your music related products on there, I do have a Amazon button on my website. So I always link my website in the description box of all of my videos. So if you're going to go on Amazon anyway, just do it through my website and The Tune Project will receive a very small percentage of your purchase.